everybody, and welcome to Crochet, a Canadian crochet podcast. I am your hostess, Claudia. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this is your first time, welcome. If this is not your first time, welcome back. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me today. I'm so glad you decided to. Um, you're going to have to forgive me. Uh, I have caught some kind of cold. I did not get a test, so I don't know if it's that thing that we don't say. Um, all I know is it's a head cold and it's lasted for, this will be the fourth day. It's not that long and I didn't really get that sick, so I don't know. But it's affecting the quality of my voice and my sinuses and my nose, so I might sound a bit funny today. But it is what it is. We're going to roll with it. I feel fine. All right, let's get started as we usually do with the Work in Progress Wednesday portion of this podcast. I worked on my sweater and I got finished the sleeve and I put some stitch markers in here because I uh, started decreasing here and here and I wanted to make sure that I remembered where uh, but I didn't start on oh no I did I started the very most minimal amount on the second sleeve so I have a tiny tiny little piece I know I said I would have been done in a week but I haven't really been working on it and I don't I don't know I just haven't just one of those things, you know, you know, happens. Um, but yeah, so I'm, it's like, it's almost done. There's no two ways about it. The sleeve is long. Oh yes. And I made the hole. Oh, I completely forgot. Okay. So this is the front. So this is the left arm that I made and I did what I wanted to and put the little thumb hole in there and I tried it on and the sleeves are a bit baggier than I thought they were going to be, but that's fine. Um, but this is going to work the way that I wanted it to. So that part is good. I wanted something that's like not super tight. I don't know. The bodice is a little bit tighter than I thought it was going to be. But I'm hoping I can rectify that a tiny bit in the blocking stage of this. But if it, if not, it's not the end of the world. I don't really care. Um, yeah, so it's, it's coming along. Maybe, maybe once I've done this podcast and I've released it and I feel guilty, I'll be able to finish it. Because usually that's what happens. Y'all help me finish my projects because I feel bad because I'm like, look at this new thing. Look at this new thing. Look at this new thing. And then I never get it done. So I have that. And then <clears throat> the next thing I'm working on is I just started this oh, not that long ago. And I saw this really cool shirt on another YouTube channel. And I can't remember for the life of me where it was. I think it was somebody doing some vintage thrifting. And it was this really, really cute um, crochet top that she had and it reminded me sort of of this other shirt that I had listed on Pinterest that's like super super simple and I was like oh my gosh I can marry these ideas together and get a different one so I started making it um, I used a rough approximation it's kind of hard to see I guess of the called the midwife um, stitch but instead of having just one I have two of these which is it's okay but I am in the process of pulling it out because I had a little bit more. But I want to show you that I was working on this. I don't like this yarn for um, crocheting this. This is the wool like from Loops and Threads. Um, it's just, it's, this is going to sound really weird, but it's just, it's too soft for this. I need something with a tiny bit more structure. Or I want something with a tiny bit more structure. So I'm glad that I started it this way. This, it worked. Like I was able to really see it and feel it. And I think it'll be good. But I am going to go and find the crafting, not the crafting cotton. It's too thick. That thinner, like it's like the thicker shawl yarn. It's still, it's so small that um, that's what I'm after. And then I actually found a pattern to make this, these little square guys. Um, a dragonfly. And I was like. That would be so cute. So I'm going to do that instead. So, but I am working on that and it's going, it's turning, this is turning out like it's, as far as I had crocheted, it was turning out the way that I had wanted it. It's a t the tiniest bit small. I think, I don't know. Again, like, because this isn't like, I'm not, or I'm making my own pattern. It's, it's trial and error and it's so much of it. I could also actually, it would be easier on my hands if I used a size four, like a worsted weight yarn just to test it out. But I feel like that's a waste because I don't think I would wear it. The holes would be like just so massive. <laughs> anyway, all that to be said is I'm pulling this out. I will be going and getting 
the nice bigger shawl cotton that comes in a uniform color and that really like big ball. I think you can get it for like eight bucks at Walmart and use that. So um, I've been using, with this yarn, I've been using a three millimeter hook, which is a tiny bit small for what this requested. I believe this requested a 3.5 millimeter hook originally, uh, but I wanted something that was like not, the, I wanted the weave to be a little more tight in the double crochet section, which it did. So I like, I do like, I like how it turned out, but I don't, I just don't like how the, um, how this yarn has worked out. That's all. And I think it will work out better if I use a cotton or a, it starts with M. I have no idea how to say, but the M cotton mercantize, I, that is not it at all. So don't, don't quote me on that. That's what I want to use for that. And then if you follow me on Instagram, I posted these the other day. Last night, I can't remember sometime. Um, these are these cute little hexagons. They are double crochet hexagons. I am using sock yarn for this because I abandoned my idea of the hat because when I was making it with the same sock yarn, I'm not sure if it's just my stitches were really wrong, but it got into this very weird shape and I know it was because of the stitches that I was using, but it did not turn out the way that I wanted it to. And it looked terrible, so I just frogged the whole thing, and then I weighed the balls in. The whole ball was 100 grams. I used my coffee, my husband's coffee scale, and then I split the ball in half so that it was 50 and 50, or like roughly as good as I could get it, which it was pretty bang on. I think it's like 49.9 grams or something like that is one. Um, and then I think I was going to put them together and then make something, and then I changed my mind again, and then I just started making these. So I have three and a little bit so far. That one, that one, and that one. And what I'm gonna do with this is, I saw this, I think it was in a book, oh my goodness, like years and years ago, is that somebody had cloth hexagons that they had made, and then they made them into kind of a little, like, honeycomb-ish thing. <clears throat> and they covered up a spot on their couch that had been ripped because I didn't want to get a new couch. So a lot of my couch is scratched from the cat and I will show you, we'll do a video montage of that. I'm not covering the whole couch with these, like that would look terrible. I may as well just make a whole blanket that looked like this if that was the case, um, cause he scratched a lot. It's one of those cats, pain in the butt. Um, but there are a few spots that are worse than others and I'm gonna cover them up with this, but it, I'm not sewing these together like in a little blanket or anything to begin with. I, it's gonna be a touch free from, so I might have like some more like on this side and some more up on this side. It's just depending on where or how the damage is laid out or there might even just be like spaces where it's like that. But I need more than three to do that. So I am also working on that. Um, this is not really a pattern. Um, it's just, I've done, I sew, I make your, not a magic loop. I don't usually use a magic loop. I don't really care for that method, but in the first chain of the, like not back from the hook, but of the chains that you started. So like number one, not number three, I put a double crochet, then a single or a chain, then two double crochets, chain, two double crochets, chain to make up. So I put 12, like 12 stitches in there and you count the first chain as a stitch. And then um, where those chains are, you put double the number of crochets in there. So the first row, you'll have like two and then a space, two and then a space. And then the next row, when you go to do them, it'll have four double crochets and then a space and four double crochets around every side. So it go every, every side of the hexagon grows by two stitches um, every row that you make. And these are five stitches each. And then in the very last one, very last row, I put two chains in the corner. Is that gonna focus? No, of course not. I put two chains in there just to give it a little bit more of a firm edge. And I am going to block these uh, because like the sizes are act like my gauge is pretty good. Pretty, it's not, it's not perfect, it never is, but it's pretty good. So yeah, this one's a little bit, I did this one on a different day than the other two when I got started. So it's a little bit, sorry, my voice is so scratchy today. All that being said, it can, be remedied when I block them. And I saw also a really cool way to block them. Oh man, this was eons ago. Probably when I first started Pinterest is, I think they used barbecue skewers originally. Um, and it was for blocking granny squares, but I thought it was genius. So they had five 
the, the so this one would have would have seven because it's the number of corners plus the center. So the granny uh, granny square one must they set up right? Maybe it was a little bored. I can't remember exactly. All I remember is like the rough approximation of it. But it was really I thought it was really smart. So you have a set size. So we'll just say this for the granny square is like this, and then it had like barbecue skewers or tiny pieces of doweling. That would have been oh goodness, like just millimeters in diameter. Um, and then, so yeah, they would have one, two, three, four at each corner and then one up at the center and then they would wet their, um, granny squares and then they would put it through the appropriate hole. So like I said, a granny square has four corners in the center. So they put it on that way. This one would have seven. So I would put one in each, uh, corner here and then one in the center. So I would put it down like that. And then I think I'm pretty sure that they put pony beads on each of the parts that had the doweling on it or the barbecue skewer, the bamboo skewer. And then they would put the second one after it's been wetted, stretch it on and put it. And they put the, they put the beads on it to um, ensure air circulation because if you just stack them like this, like yes, it will block them and they'll be fine. But this one is gonna take a long time to dry. And if you have a natural um, wool that you're using, it's gonna to stink to high heaven. So I wouldn't, I would never do that like this. And then also that ensures that you get a pretty uniform set of squares or hexagons when you're finished because you're putting, like you're putting everything on the same, the same set of, of doweling. So it will work out. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. I don't, I have some really, really thick wooden or bamboo skewers. Um, I might have to go buy some other ones, but that is a future problem but that is something else that I'm working on right there. We've now reached the completed item section, which I love that, except I've had poor productivity this week because I've been watching In the Line of Duty and I've been captivated by that show, but now it's over so I can't watch it anymore. So we'll be back on track now. Anyway, so frogging stuff doesn't help, let's be honest. Um, I showed you either last week or the week before I was making a mat for our dogs for our water and then I messed something up and then I never went back and revisited it, but I found a pattern that I have been saving on Pinterest forever that I modified slightly um, and used that instead. So it looks like this. And I used the yarn, this is Burnett Premium Cotton. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I forget the color. It's got got beige gray and just an off-white all together in there it's pretty nice I like it and then I finished it with a linen stitch because that's how I finish everything because it's my favorite and I used doo -doo -doo, a six millimeter hook and it's double crochet single crochet linen stitch and bobble stitch which uh some of them kind of like it started out fine then at the third row got funny and then the, set, the fourth and fifth row ended up getting back in order but I don't I'm not exactly sure what I did it doesn't really matter because this is for the dogs I'm not selling this or getting rid of it or anything but that's that like they're not even going to notice it's mostly covered up anyway the pattern that I started this from is called and I'm, I'm just looking over here because I have it I have it up so I can say it right it is from the cream of the crop crochet and it's called a it's called the textured rug crochet pattern I will put a link in the description box below. And yes, you are going to see when you go over there, it does not look the same as this because it's not. There are some things that I did differently and there are some things that I did not add that are in the pattern. That being said, I still use that pattern as the base for this. And I feel, because I've read it through several times, I feel like I can bring back like one of my first things that I ever did and I can review this pattern. So. This pattern, I would give a four out of five. It is very easy to follow. The only thing that I feel could be a stumbling block for others is that there are not tons of pictures in here, but that's okay. That's not the end of the world. That is not a reason to not engage with this project because while, while there is a lack of pictures, the description of how to accomplish things is very clear and it looks like it, someone has put a lot of effort into this so that it's not, it's not a downfall. It's not a stumbling block. But if you're like, I just really don't understand how to do that. And you're a visual learner, then you might have a little bit of trouble with it, but I would give it a go anyway, just in case, because 
while the rug does not look exactly like this, I think of like this, but several times. Um, it's, yeah, it worked up really easily. It like, one of the things that I look for in a pattern is does this end up how it says it's going to end up? And it does. The only reason, yep, like I said, mine is different is because I omitted some things and I did a few things differently because I didn't want a whole great big size rug. This one was perfect. I wouldn't change anything about this. And I would, the only thing I would ask for the other one is if they had more pictures to please put them up. But again, great. If you need a carpet in your house and you have like a little kind of like beachy boho style, then this would totally fit in. And you can, they call also for acrylic yarn which to me was a tiny bit odd for the pattern, um, but to each their own. I'm not going to say that that yarn is not going to work for this pattern because the pictures that they um, that they posted of it look great, um, but I wanted something absorbent, which is why I went with cotton. But you could make it out of acrylic. You could make it out of a cotton acrylic blend. You could make it probably out of pretty well anything. Maybe not wool. I feel like it would be a waste on, to walk on wool and wreck it and everything but so I am happy with how this turned out and if you have need a rug I would recommend that you go do that one I got on here today and I was like oh yeah like my nose is not gonna bother me all that much and I'll be able to talk what was I thinking I sound terrible I can hear myself on camera I sound terrible and I apologize for that I'm sorry that I sound so bad oh man Ugh. what else is new oh man I don't think anything else is new. Like, we made a pretty dull life right now. It is Chinooking yet again. I feel like every time I go to post these, it's either freezing like it's minus 30 or it's Chinooking. We've had so many Chinooks this this winter. It's insane. Last winter we had, I don't know, I feel like we had zero for a long, long, long time. And then we had a bunch, but they were like in June, which that's super weird to have like the Chinook arch in June. But it's supposed to be really, really nice. So... There's yard work that I have to do that I'm not looking forward to. Like I don't, I don't want to do it, but um, it's supposed to be 15 degrees Celsius on Sunday, so there's no reason not to because it's going to be really warm and everything's going to be really wet and it'll be gross, but we need to do it. So there is that, and yeah, that's it. I'm sorry, nothing terribly exciting to report this week. I am not starting any more projects right now. I am in house cleaning mode and I want to go thrifting later today just to see what there is because I haven't been for a while um, and I would be out of quarantine or self-isolation. Um, like I said, I didn't get tested so I can't confirm or deny if I have that. All I know is I have symptoms that do overlap and some of them don't. Uh, but still, when you, where I live, where if you have any symptoms, you're supposed to self-isolate. Um, or at least you were. I feel like they change the law every like three days. So who knows what I'm actually supposed to do. But to be on the safe side and just to not spread illness to people, this is this is what I'm doing. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so glad that you decided to spend a little bit of time with me this afternoon. It's afternoon where I am. So whatever time of day it is where you are. And if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and giving me a subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I upload episodes, that would be so great. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day and stay kind, stay beautiful. Treat your vagabond hearts right. Bye.